<laughs> strange, strange environments for me. Usually I'm staring through the window I have here and it's very Arctic. Let's see. You can see that. Oh, in, man. In there. No, no, no. <laughs> snow and cold and everything. <laughs> All right, what's up, everybody? This is Brian Israel, San Diego Metal Swap Talk, uh, with a very, very special guest today. We're very excited to have this guy here. Uh, a big surprise for us to be able to land this one. Uh, Power Metal Titans from Finland, Mr. Tony Kako from Sonata Arctica. Tony, welcome aboard. Hello. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. How are you guys? Doing great, doing great, man. Uh, so you guys have a new album coming out. Uh, March 8th, out on Atomic Records, Clear Cold Beyond. So Donna Art yep. comes back again. I mean, didn't really come back because you guys have been pretty active since the pandemic and everything. Um, but it's been uh, five years since the last kind of like, you know, classical Sonata Artica album you did you guys did put out a couple of uh, acoustic albums in the meanwhile um can you tell us what the writing process was for uh, clear cold beyond um was this written during the pandemic as well uh no that was well <laughs> is it over yet <laughs> <laughs> right is it over yet <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah well we are it has become the new normal as they say so yeah um i started writing the songs right in the beginning of 22 early 23 and i kept writing for two three months and uh, i had to actually cut it because we had like too many songs already and i just, just came up with more and more new songs and then uh I, I was in flames i would have loved to just you know in flames your shirt i would have loved <laughs> to just you know <laughs> go on and write but we had to hit the studio and then give tommy something to play and uh, the drums and uh, and uh, so uh, we had to cut the process, unfortunately, in the middle of it. But we had like plenty. We had already too many songs, so it, it was like a uh, pleasure. It's easy for us to choose which songs we want to have on the actual album, and, mm. and or actually on the recordings. And um, then later on, we just had to choose which we actually want to have on the album. Then, and uh, so it was fairly quick easy uh we were in the middle of the whole writing process we toured to latin america mm. and uh, i wrote vast majority of the lyrics on that tour sitting by the pool somewhere and then what? such <laughs> strange the strange environments for me usually i'm staring through the window i have here and it's very arctic let's see you can see that oh in, man in there no, no, no. <laughs> snow and cold and everything <laughs> right so, yeah. yeah so i imagine uh, that possibly made of uh influence the lyrics speaking of the lyrics um i knew we would eventually fall into the sea uh but we didn't expect sonata Arctica to have the soundtrack to that uh can you tell us a little bit about the uh in can you give some insight behind the song california california well um i'm using california in this song uh in the same uh sort of meaning like you know flying cows i will be your when the cows are flying kind of thing because uh, it's just like in, in the in the song I'm saying it's a human relationship thing and, and mm. things go wrong. And, 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 and there's a person who is interested in, in anybody in, in the uh, storytelling me that, uh, uh, and then for all the wrong reasons, he or she is trying to use the, the person singing the song uh, to gain something, popularity, access to some other people or whatever, but, uh, I'm I'm aware of that, and uh, hence I'm I'm just you know rejecting that person and and mm. and uh, the telling that person that uh, the, I'll be yours when California falls into the sea, which okay. I I studied as much that it's never going to happen. It's impossible because of the continental plates are going in a different direction. Right. But there's going to be tremors and and shit like that. Obviously, yeah. sorry. <laughs> but, <All right. laughs> but yeah, you you're probably used to. Anyhow, it's, no, it's a great it's, song. Slide into the sea, like in the in the science science fiction movies. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, we've been listening to the album lately, and and uh, oh, it's, it's really good. Uh, we've really been enjoying it, so we are mm -hmm. uh, really happy that it's uh, you know that I, I believe it's going to do real well. Um, so, being Thanks. the main songwriter um, of the band, uh, how do you balance the creative input from the rest of the band? 
Well, lately it's been very limited. This is our album number 11, and so far there have been two songs from other members of the band. So it's it's fairly low percentage, I'd say. So, yeah. so it's, it's whenever they come up with something, sometimes we are able to sort of slide it in. But uh, I, they usually use their creativity within the song that I provide them. I leave there certain things so they they have like freedom of writing solos and 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 certain bits and pieces like I sometimes may not come up with a uh, like a smart riff for a guitar to play in a certain spot somewhere and so I just leave it blank and just tell them that play something in that kind of something style something hard or something long winding uh, chords or whatever and uh, they they have a playroom there and uh, I think it's easier uh, like the guys say that it's easier when you have one skipper in, in the boat <laughs> basically mm -hmm. you know uh, like following one the rest yeah, yeah yeah following okay. one guy's vision mostly if everybody's pulling the uh, you know the album in a different direction it's getting a little bit difficult but still uh, I think this allows everybody some uh, artistic freedom in their own instrument everybody gets to make the song their own yeah, and I, I imagine it makes mostly a, <laughs> the the writing process a lot move along a lot faster yeah, yeah I, i've read to, uh, the arrangements are fairly complete when i give it to the guys there are some bits and pieces i i usually don't touch the solos the free form solos that are there but mm. then there are some things that are like written things that i i, I write ready and you guys play what i have here but uh, usually there is always a, a free form solo and, and a lot of room for, like, for example, keyboard player Henrik. I never tell him too much what to play with piano, although I, I, I play myself, obviously. But but uh, I, I leave him a room to make it sound like an actual piano player is playing the piano bits. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, um, you have a, uh, another tour coming up this March in Finland um, right after the album drops. Um, how involved are you in planning uh, the visual aspects, the lighting, the stage design? Not too much. Back in the day when we started the whole thing, I was it was chronic. I was trying to control absolutely everything and anything <laughs> before I started trusting the people that work for us. They actually are professional and, and know what they are doing. So uh, usually my input, especially when it comes to the actual live show and and and, and, and I, I come up with certain ideas during the uh, tour. Like it would be really cool if the whole stage went dark in certain moment and I would just only have a spot or whatever. Mm. And then we change the lighting situations, for example, in the middle of the tour sometimes. So, and, uh, and um, well, stage, what, what the stage looks like, that is something that we uh, plan together because it obviously it involves monetary investments as well so <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's I, I think everybody needs to be involved in that so it's it somehow stays in check financially and it's, it's budget. Of, <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and we don't have to hire 10 more guys to build everything up every show and and, and that it the whole thing stays uh, in such a way that it, it's in, uh, it's possible for band our size to fit it in most of the venues that we play mm. so we get like get to use the actual stage thing so we, that basically what it means is that we have two or three different sizes of backdrops and whatever side drops we might have and, and such things that is easy yeah. to like uh sort of get in a certain to scale it down or up, right you know basically but still whatever huge backdrop we arrive we come up with and and print then we go and play some uh, festival like what can open there and it looks like a stamp <laughs> in <the> letters <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll be seeing yeah. you there this summer so we'll see what Very you got cool. <laughs> nice nice <laughs> uh having toured like latin america and japan uh what do you think it is about the music you guys create that resonates so much with uh those different uh, demographics mm, well like in japan and in latin america especially people tend to be very much passionate about speedy stuff and and something that is has something beautiful when it comes to japan beautiful is a very important thing for them there and and and, and you know 
have beautiful melodies and and lyrics and and the whole concept resonates some like a visual way and 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 gives them something they don't necessarily even understand some in some of the countries the lyrical content of the song so that doesn't necessarily play a huge role in the whole thing but it, it's if you have a speedy song and it's beautiful melodies and and something that you can sing along even if you don't know the lyrics then it works and uh, i don't know it's a it's a finish for us Finns. it comes really naturally we have this slavic melancholic mood somehow within us at least our generation still we, we were born around the time when finland was fairly close to russia also we had a close relations with them and everything so not anymore <laughs> <laughs> uh this upcoming album is gonna is will be released on atomic fire records uh and in the past year on nuclear blast uh what role do you feel that record labels can contribute to uh to the band's success anymore is it still a big part uh well um that depends on the amount of work that the band is willing to put into it and if the band has resources and connections you can always hire like a pr professionals to work for you and who then again have the connections in the right places but uh, for us, at least, it it's, it helps. It's so much easier for us to just, you know, be on the label. We're used to it. We have that old guys. Mm. <laughs> it, it's the way it's always been. And, but uh, at the same time, we're seeing in social media, a lot of bands doing it on their own, smaller ones, obviously, and, and, and somehow getting through as well. So it's less and less, but I, I think our older established bands, it, it seems to be the way. If you are able to get a decent recording contract from a label and, and a label that is willing to put out physical copies of the album, at least for us, it's very important. I, I can't imagine not having physical copies of the album. That should be a thing, especially in the metal thing. You know, it's a very difficult to sign digital copies of the album, for example. <laughs> and and uh, it's, it's, it seems to be a big thing, you know, people coming up with vinyls and everything, and it's it's, it's amazing. So, uh, yeah, I, I think they still serve a purpose, but I think it, it's less and less these days, unfortunately. Somehow I, mm. I miss the old olden days before internet and everything, as easy as it is to talk with you guys on the internet <laughs> right now, but it has come up come you know with so many downsides as well and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm also of that age that i i vividly remember the time there was no internet at all so yeah that makes sense um we had a recent discussion on on our on our youtube channel about our all-time favorite metal live albums um do you have any favorites in that category uh first album that I ever bought, or actually it was a tape cassette, it was uh, Queen Live Magic, 1986. Mm. And, and so that has a special place in my heart. And uh, the reason I even got the whole thing was that I, I saw a Queen concert on TV. I came back from school. I was still in elementary school, like maybe on fourth grade or something like that. And I turned on the TV and was channel hopping through all the four channels that we had. Two of them were Swedish. <laughs> so, and then one of the Finnish channels, there was like this concert. And I said, okay, that, that looks nice. And hopped on, stayed on that concert. And it was Queen. I, I had never even heard of the band before. And it was amazing. I just completely fell in love with it. And then there was this, some newspaper or something had an ad advertisement of, of this uh, music club that you can join and you get like three free cassettes when you join and, and everything and then and, and i jumped on the occasion and, and got me a queen live live album that was available there easily and and then one was uh, uh slippery one wet by bon jovi and then uh whiplash mile by billy idol those were the three first things music cassettes that i ever purchased myself or i got them for free but i paid for them later 
in many different <laughs> ways. But, but still, yeah. I, so that definitely plays a big, big, uh, big role. And I, I have to say that Queen <laughs> live magic. That's my choice here. There are great other 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 live albums as well, but that plays a big role. That's a good one. Uh, I have a buddy who's a big fr- uh, fan. His name is uh, uh, Eduardo Navarrete. Navarrete. Navarrete, yeah. Um, he asks, uh, what has been the most challenging part of your career and how did you deal with that? Uh, I think it's every time when you have to go through a member change within the band for any reason. Uh, so those are the most demanding things. I can't imagine anything more difficult. No, it's, well, someone dying, that would be something, God forbid. So, but but you know, when you have to let someone go, you know, that's very difficult because these are like brothers, these guys. Mm-hmm. And when, yeah, it, it's, yeah, this is my answer. Yeah. Member changes. It's never easy. Yeah, I mean, yeah that, that sounds difficult. Um, that's all we got for today, and we appreciate your time. Mm-hmm. And uh, best of luck on the album. We look forward to uh, to checking it out when it comes out as well, even though we've got a pretty good copy. Yeah, <laughs> we heard it, and I think we're going to keep listening to it. So the album cool. is <laughs> Clear Cold Beyond from Sonata Artica out on March 8th through Atomic Records. Atomic lots, Fire. Yeah. Atomic, Atomic, Atomic Fire, 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 yeah. Atomic <laughs> Fire. Um, lots of different ways. It's a lot of different formats that it's coming out. So like Tony was mentioning, physical copies. Pick up a physical copy. We'll pick it up to ours. Um, so thanks for joining us, Tony. Until next time, Brian, Israel, Metal Swap Talk. We'll see you later. Thanks for